So I'm here with Dr. Owen Montgomery, and you've got a really fascinating prototype here. Can you walk me through it a bit? Sure. Uh, this is the very first uh, simulator in the world uh, that allows uh, a surgeon to perform a low transverse cesarean section delivery for the purposes of saving the mother's life and a baby's life in the condition of obstructed labor. The maternal mortality in the developing world is so high that the opportunity to save both the mom and the baby by intervening at an obstructed labor um, is a very, very pressing need. Uh, this prototype was presented at the Saving Lives at Birth Grand Challenges and was the uh, uh, highest award winner, uh, allowing us to develop further simulators so that we can scale up for global distribution. Uh, so what's, what's, what's the real issue here in developing countries? Is there not enough doctors or does this need to be done by people who aren't doctors? Yeah. So uh, it's an excellent question and the answer is, is both. In many parts of the world, in uh, Gambia for instance where I was recently, uh, there are only two obstetricians in the whole country. So there aren't obstetricians and we need to train doctors who are not surgeons and senior midwives who are currently there taking care of women to intervene on those rare cases when the only answer is a surgical delivery. We know that by increasing the cesarean delivery rate from zero to as low as five or eight percent, we'll reduce the maternal mortality in half and every mom saved is a baby saved. In addition to the, to the life of the mom, there's substantial uh, morbidity that goes along, including things like ruptured uterus, infection, vesicovaginal fistula. So this is a very lifelike uh, simulation, even though this is the first prototype. You can see also in the video that you have to repair the uterus. There's amniotic fluid, there's blood, there's a baby. Once the baby's delivered, you can also resuscitate the baby. So this gives the, the midwife or the, uh, the non-surgeon house officer an opportunity to actually put their hand in the belly, touch the uterus, and practice a very rigid surgical technique that will allow them to do this life-saving surgery. It's our intention to also develop the simulator to a high enough fidelity that we can also train surgeons in the developed world and also train them in certain conditions which they may not see on a regular basis. We would like our surgeons to be doing their first surgery on our mannequin rather than the first surgery on my daughter. Right. And then finally, the third mission is to train um, um, the military first responders, the para-jumpers or the army rangers or the special operative medics who go into countries where there have been disasters like the earthquake in Haiti or the tsunami and they can set up military hospitals because right now when the earthquake occurs, all the infrastructure is gone. The hospitals are crumbled, there are no doctors to deliver babies. So we think this also gives an opportunity for us to respond in a humanitarian way. Um, our first project is to train midwives and non-surgeons to actually learn how to do the surgery, put their hand in, deliver the baby, do it in a reproducible way, so before they go off back to their country, they've learned it on the simulator, and then in one of the hospitals that we've connected with in Africa, they'll actually do their first half dozen C-sections under the mentorship of one of our trained surgeons, and then they're able to go back into their country. That's, what, are, what's the reaction of the midwives, for example? I would think if I was a midwife, I'd be like, oh my god. So the, the, the reaction of the midwives is, is phenomenal. For instance, the group uh, Midwives for Haiti um, currently exceeds the need. They're in Haiti right now. The hospitals have been destroyed, and they're very anxious to have their first responders trained. At Drexel University in Philadelphia, where I'm the chairman of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, we have eight midwives, and they'll be the first midwives in the United States trained on the simulator. Um, also, the, uh, the midwives who uh, currently work in Africa are very enthusiastic because they know that there aren't physicians in many of the rural uh, hospitals. And if it's a two or four or six hour drive and a woman is bleeding or the baby is dying, this gives them the tool to save those lives. And I think that's, that's the primary goal for operative experience and for our simulator. Excellent. Thank you very much for showing it to us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming.